service today. And today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of our Pentecost season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thus the Lord love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Lord have mercy <clears throat> upon us. Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. 
Jonathan stripped himself of the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, and his armor, and even his sword, and his, uh, his bow, and his belt. David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. As a result, Saul sent him over the army, and all the people, even the servants of Saul, approved. The next day, an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved within his house, while David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day. Saul had a spear in his hand, and Saul threw the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, but it departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and made him the commander of a thousand. And David marched out and came in, leading the army. David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he had greatness, he stood in awe of him. And all Israel and Judah loved David, for it was he who marched out and came in, leading them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me together in reading Psalm 133, found in your service program. Together. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard.
Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory be to, to thee, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace. Be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. I was praying as hard and fast as I could. 
By God's grace, we made it safely to the other side and counted our blessings for God's protection and His grace. And we were also mad at ourselves for taking such an unnecessary, unwise risk of overloading the boat in our impatience. In today's Gospel reading, we find a story about storms, fear, and trust in God. <clears throat> While traveling on a mission across the water, the disciples found themselves suddenly in the midst of a storm. We may also find ourselves at times in the middle of storms of life. Contrary to the so-called prosperity message delivered by some televangelists, we as Christians, we are not immune to the storms of this life. This story does not promise us that bad things will never happen to us. We are constantly subjected to the storms of this life. Like a squall that comes and turns our life upside down. We can be tossed around the stormy seas of illness, cancer, health challenges, the pandemic, depression, Troubled marriages, job loss, worries for our children, and worries for our grandchildren. Anxieties about our elderly parents, fear of being alone, financial concerns, and certainly political storms. The church may also be like a boat tossed against the waves of our current culture our declining attendance nationally, and unfortunately, the divisions within the church. No, we are not insulated or immune from the storms of this life. But God, our gospel, tells us that Jesus is present with us and that God is in our midst. Even when we feel that we are in over our heads, Jesus is stronger than the storms. Jesus is stronger than the storms and the chaos of this life. This ancient story reminds us that Jesus' lordship is over the natural world and the human world. Even though there are real and fearsome things in this life, and there are, we need not be paralyzed by fear. They need not have power over us or own us because we are not alone. We are not alone in the boat. God is with us. He hears our call. He understands our troubled heart. And he is ready to act upon our life with saving grace. Christ sleeps in us, but is ready to be awake. Like in our story in the gospel today. Frederick Buechner, one of my favorite theologians, just love him. He makes this quote, Christ sleeps in the deepest cells of us all. In whatever way we can call on him, as the fishermen did in their boat, to come awake within us and to give us courage, to give us hope, to show us, each one, our way. May he be with us, especially when the winds go mad and the waves run wild, as they will for all of us before we're done, so that even in their midst, we may find peace in him. Love that quote. Jesus is the calm in our storms. In our scripture reading, the story shows Jesus sleeping in the midst of this storm. Like David's calm before the giant Philistine, as we heard this morning, or at least alluded to it, Jesus sleeps in confidence. He sleeps in confidence. Trusting of God's care no matter 
the actual circumstances. The reason that God seems to be asleep or silent at times is because he does not share our panic. <laughs> he is God, and he knows the end of the story. Today's lesson is an invitation for us to trust in God. To trust in God not only during the good times of our life, the safe times, but to especially trust Him during the personal storms of our life. The story calls for us to trust that we are not alone. God will be present to strengthen us, to care for us, and to give us the calm found in trusting in Him. The text also tells us that we are called to be storm people. We are. We're called to be storm people. We are not called to anchor ourselves in some safe, secure harbor, but to journey to the other side to fulfill the mission of the church. We are not made for cozy Harbors, we are made for storms. We are called to weather the stormy seas through trusting in God and anchoring our faith in Christ so that we might be a witness and beacon for others. So that we might be a witness and beacon for others to find the calm in Jesus throughout the storm of their life. We pray that the voice of Jesus will be heard, especially within this community and with us all, that says, peace, peace, be still. May it be so with us. Amen. 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 Now stand and say together the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is the outline of our Christian faith. It is found on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray for the conflict in the Middle East especially restraining Israel and the Palestinians. We continue to pray for the country of Ukraine. We continue to pray for peace and order in the country of Haiti. We continue to pray for victims of violence and domestic violence. We pray for those perpetrators that they will turn their hearts toward Jesus Christ and repent. Amen. Thanks for all the blessings in this life. Amen. 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 Grant these our prayers, O oh Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our confession can be found on page 331 in the Book of Common Prayer. As we confess together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve, serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 332 for the liturgical words of comfort. These are the original uh, prayers found in the uh, Thomas Cranmer prayer book, the original prayer book. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and thou will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with God's spirit. Peace, everyone. Peace. 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 Peace.
Gary, you want to talk about the men's club breakfast? Yes. Uh, thank you, Father Terry. Uh, we served 46 people this morning at uh, our breakfast. At least. And uh, last Sunday, we served 44. So it, it, it really feels good to have the 8 o'clock service and the 1030 service, the members to have an opportunity at that ministry of sharing, breaking the bread, having breakfast together. And uh, we will continue. We'll be again next uh, Sunday uh, serving breakfast from about 9 o'clock till 10. And uh, she would like to get as close to 50 people before this summer's out. <laughs> That'd be great. So, <laughs> invite a friend. Thank you. We especially encourage the 1030 folks to, uh, to come. Thank you. I'll just go ahead and say a word about the annual layman's conference uh, is, is coming up. The dates are August 9th through 12th. All men are invited to that. Uh, our West Tennessee, the Diocese of West Tennessee is supporting or sponsoring uh, this statewide uh, conference this year. 
Uh, so please, uh, we would love to see St. Philip be uh, nicely represented. Uh, you can contact Gary, uh, Michael Armour, and really several of us for more information. But let's uh, get our name in so we can uh, get our reservations together. The meeting place is a former convent, uh, the St. Mary's Convent, and it's just a, it's a beautiful, really extraordinary area. Uh, something to experience. Are there any other announcements that we might have? Do we have any birthday celebrations this morning? How about anniversary celebrations? We had a bunch at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive. <laughs>
Lord, that I may go near your altar. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with thy spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is it meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who by water and the Holy Spirit has made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth the glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing.
that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith, his faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may attain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Become what you have received. Let us pray. Almighty and heavenly God, we most heartily thank thee for that that seed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through 
hope for thy everlasting kingdom. And we only beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day, for your upcoming week, during our great Pentecost season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.